everyone thinks of Wyoming, it's the cowboy state. So, you know, you, you think of open land, cattle and cowboys. They want it to be open land, cattle, cowboys and crypto. This 40 acre plot of land in northwestern Wyoming has a new owner a group of around 6,000 crypto investors whose goal is to build a city using the Ethereum blockchain. We're imagining this kind of future where, you know, you see this beautiful parcel map of all the different pieces of land in one click, basically just buy this NFT and you now have the right to use that land. This group of investors is called CityDAO and it has no official leader. Rather, it's owned and governed by its members. We are collectively governing this land, so we're deciding what happens to the land, if you know we're going to build things, if we're going to you know allow people to camp on the land. This type of organization is known as a DAO. There are about 200 tracked by the data service DeepDAO, and they all have different goals, like collectively owning an NBA team, a rare copy of the US Constitution, or a future blockchain-based city. So how exactly do DAOs work? Why have they become a part of Wyoming real estate? And what risks come with investing in them? DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Think about a mutual fund, which is a, an investment product created by a company. The company maintains it. The company is responsible for managing all the money, for deciding what the mutual fund's purpose is, what its goal is. But unlike a mutual fund, DAOs don't have a company or any leader to make these decisions. Instead, members pool money together and decide as a group how they want to spend it. Usually, once members buy in, they receive a token, which grants them voting rights. All of the DAO's functions are also written into code on the blockchain. Think about an investment vehicle where all the components of the investment vehicle are written into a piece of software and launched, and nobody actually owns it, and it runs out on its own. Unlike a traditional corporate structure where the company looks for investors to raise money, DAOs let people find them through the internet. The real sort of ingenious idea behind this isn't necessarily that you've come up with some new way to make money. It's that you've come up with a new way to find investors. CityDAO became the first DAO to own land, thanks to a new law in Wyoming that went into effect last July. The law recognizes DAOs as LLCs, and LLCs can own real estate. Wyoming passed this law because Wyoming legislators a couple of years ago decided that blockchain could give the state a competitive advantage and they wanted to try to attract blockchain-based businesses. Wyoming has passed a number of laws to make it easier for blockchain-based companies to operate out of the state, one of which exempts cryptocurrency from state tax. Inspired by the Wyoming Dow Law, Scott Fitzsimmons started CityDAO in the hopes that eventually people could buy land instantaneously and those transactions would be transparent for all to see on the blockchain. If you were to go want to buy uh, or build something on a piece of land in Wyoming right now, you would have to go to you know, LoopNet, you'd have to go explore different pieces of land, um, you'd have to go on Craigslist and try to you know, call people and work out a deal, sign some papers, maybe mail something. It would just be a very cumbersome, tiresome process. Fitzsimmons says CityDAO has raised around $7 million from its membership since it was founded last July. Members include Brian Armstrong, the co-founder of Coinbase, and Vitalik Buterin, co-creator of the Ethereum network. To join CityDAO, you have to buy a Citizen NFT, which currently sells for about 0.4 Ethereum, which is around $1,000. Once you're a citizen, you have the right to vote on proposals and propose your own ideas. For example, we had citizens already pass a proposal to get drone footage of the land. In January, CityDAO released a new batch of NFTs for citizens to purchase. Each one represents a lease to a specific plot of land in Wyoming. So imagine CityDAO LLC owns this property, but you know we basically encode a, a, a lease as an NFT and say, you have the right to use this parcel, build on this parcel. Fitzsimmons says they intend to treat this parcel as a test run and that they're already looking at locations for their next purchase. He says the next one will be in a less remote area, so citizens can have the option to build on the land. Perhaps there's some future where we start you know, living there, living close to each other, building things on the land. He also says CityDAO is looking into buying land outside Wyoming. We would still use the Wyoming LLC, and technically Wyoming LLCs can own land anywhere. But there are certainly some nuances to the, how that is, um, you know, how that works. DAOs are still considered an experimental business model, even as awareness grows. I think DAOs are going to remain limited. I think the idea is very intriguing. I think you will see a lot of attempts at experimentation. People are going to try it out, see where it fits. But I think 
for the time being, it's going to be really hard to do one of these on a very, very large scale. One DAO that made headlines in November was Constitution DAO. It tried to buy a rare first edition copy of the U.S. Constitution, raising over $40 million in less than a week. That's just one example of how DAOs can raise a lot of capital very quickly. But this also makes them a big target for hacking. When you're doing this, ultimately, everything now becomes dependent upon the software. If it was not written well and it collects a lot of money, somebody's going to figure out a way to hack it and get into it. I mean, even even well-written software programs can be hacked. And because most DAOs communicate through the messaging platform Discord, security there is a growing area of concern as well. On January 10th, someone hacked into a city DAO administrator's account on Discord and scammed some members into sending them tens of thousands of dollars. Fitzsimmons said that after the incident, CityDAO did a full review and increased security on its server. He added that this type of attack has been happening to several DAO servers. A spokeswoman from Discord says the company is working to prevent scams by investing significant resources in education and tools that protect its users. The lack of a traditional corporate structure could also make it harder for individual investors to hold DAOs accountable when it comes to fraud, scams, and abuse. This is a... a very risky, very nascent space. And most of the people who are in it sort of understand those risks and are willing to take them. The SEC says it wants to bring the digital currency market under its investor protection framework. Meanwhile, DAO enthusiasts like Fitzsimmons are hopeful that DAOs will improve and grow over time. Eventually, you know, people will kind of realize the you know existing system of like it takes you know a month to buy a piece of you know land and property that will seem really crazy. So I, I definitely imagine more and more land and assets coming onto the blockchain, and you know, City DAO being there when that happens, and you know, helping make it all possible. 